Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to IIUM TV. My name is Dayang Rafatini and I am your host for today's show. In conjunction with the holy month of Ramadan, IIUM TV presents to you a brand new show entitled The Chit Chat Ramadan. As we are now, um, Alhamdulillah, we have now reached the five, the fifth episode today. Thank you to everyone who has been supporting us ever since the first episode and joining us today. So, for today's episode, the special five, we brought to you a very special and magnificent guest. She is a famous Malaysian celebrity, a TV host, humanitarian, the chairperson of Min Kobe Foundation, the founder of KitaKami.com, uh, and the co-founder of Dukes TV, Please welcome to our show today, Ms. Nina. Hi, Assalamualaikum everyone. Hi, Dayang, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I'm fine, thank you. I am at the hotel currently. I apologize for the bad internet connection because I am being seen at the hotel for the time being. So I apologize it, uh, I apologize in advance to everyone, to our viewers. No problem, so, Alhamdulillah. Ms. Um, Nina, can you share? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so Ms. Nina, can you share with us uh, how is your Ramadan experience so far considering the fact that uh, our ex our Ramadan this year is quite unique and different in, in a beautiful way. So perhaps you want to share with us how is your Ramadan experience okay, so far? Okay, so, um, okay. Auzubillah, mishaitan rajim, bismillah, manurahim, rabbi shrahli sadri wa yasirli amri wa hlul uqdata minisani yafqawu kawli. So, yeah, uh, alhamdulillah, this Ramadan, I'm sure, is, um, for me, it's been the most different Ramadan from all of the other times that I've experienced Ramadan. And of, I feel like uh, probably all of us are feeling the same way mm -hmm. because uh, this MCO and COVID-19 is something that we've never mm -hmm. experienced uh, ever before, I think, in our lifetime. Uh, I'm not too sure about our parents. Mm -hmm. I don't think they had an epidemic mm -hmm. in their lifetime as well. Um, but, you know, this uh, Ramadan, I feel, has been very uh, special. I call it special because... I feel like it's been the best Ramadan for me, alhamdulillah. The fact that we get to spend more time with family, you know, it's a huge blessing. True. And most of the time, if you, you know, I don't know about you, but for me, when it's Ramadan time, I'm always out of the house. I'm always at this masjid, that masjid, this place, that place, busy with this, busy with that. And actually, we don't spend much time with our own family. We're always, you know, going out, okay, that's my you know, my mm. friends or you know and it also yeah, yeah and it also kind of forces us to be our own imam so now we have to read more quran when we solat when we do our own qiyam we have to read more qiyam you know rather than just be behind the imam so it's a lot of uh, opportunities for us to actually really um improve ourselves as muslims and uh, really reconnect with the quran so alhamdulillah ramadan for me has been good um, but at the same time, I feel like, you know, everyone has different experiences um, and MCO as well is, uh, is a very difficult time for many people in the sense that um, there are many people who are in need, there are many people who are sick, there are also many people who are, are really struggling at this time. And so, uh, you know, subhanAllah, right now, I feel like, um, which is our topic of today as well, which is about giving charity kan, in the month of Ramadan, um, we, this is the time when it comes to giving, this is the, the time to give, not only just because it's Ramadan, but because of the situation that we are actually currently in. So uh, there's an emergency need. And at the same time, uh, you know, just... SubhanAllah, so many blessings that come with this month of Ramadan. So yeah, alhamdulillah for everything. Alhamdulillah, I like the where you highlight that we have to become the imam of ourselves during this Ramadan because previously we have to follow people. We do, we don't know the purpose, but right we have to invite our own self to do the good mm -hmm. on our own. Alhamdulillah. All right. Oh, it's lagging. So, um, yeah. all right. Okay. So before we start lagging. Uh, okay. Now you're okay. 
Okay, all right. So before we begin, allow me to quote a very powerful and inspiring quote from Miss Nina herself, uh, which I found on her Instagram. In order for us to make the world a better place, it is important for us to look at the lens of the heart of giving rather than taking. And that is a win-win situation. So with that being said, the topic for our show today is entitled Ramadan and Forgiving. So Ms. Mina, you are no stranger in giving charity to the community. And for the past year, you have involved yourself in various humanitarian projects and volunteerism activities. So let us do a flashback with the audience on why, on the biggest question, why and when did you start involving your... Oh, okay, when and why did I begin uh, volunteering and doing charity work? So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, alhamdulillah, I started becoming more active in voluntary work in the year 2014, 2013, 2014. Uh, previously before that, yes, I did a little bit of volunteer work, but I wasn't very aware about the importance of actually doing it in, in, a, you know, in a constant way. Of course, it ties in with my hijrah. Before my hijrah, I didn't really care too much about the world around me and uh, making the, the world a better place, you know? It, it, uh, it didn't really, it wasn't really a big part of me. But Alhamdulillah, after my hijrah, after I came back from Hajj, I was very much inspired to do something with my life. I wanted to give back because I felt that, you know, I, I spent a lot of my time before my hijrah not doing enough good. And so I felt like, okay, now's the time I need to do something. But of course, when we begin at something, um, usually the question is, how do I begin? How do I start? And so what I did was um, I made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I asked Allah, Ya Allah, I want to do something. I want to give back, but I don't know how. I'm not too sure who. Please guide me to the right people so that I can learn from them and so that I can uh, help them help people. One of the things that really uh, motivated me to do something was when I uh, started to learn more about the Palestinian struggle. And I think in 2014, they were actually bombing uh, Gaza during Ramadan, in this month of Ramadan. And for me, that was just, I, I, just, couldn't, I just couldn't take it. I was like, subhanAllah, why, you know? Not just why, mm -hmm. but what can I do to help? So from there, it opened up my eyes to the, uh, to the Syrian struggle, you know, to the Syrian refugee struggle, uh, what's going on uh, over there. And uh, slowly but surely, I was like, subhanAllah, there's just so many people that are in need right now. So one thing led to another. And alhamdulillah, I was introduced to Fatiha Shui. She is the founder of uh, One Moment for Them. It's an NGO. And uh, through this NGO, I was able to, uh, I was exposed to actually meeting uh, refugees and going out to do some volunteer work uh, in KL. And at the same time, uh, flew to Jordan, my very first time to meet with Syrian refugees there. And that's where I met other NGOs like Chinta Syria Malaysia, the founder of Chinza Sri Malaysia, uh, Brother Musa, who happened to also be a student in Jordan at the time. Uh, and uh, alhamdulillah from there, you know, other missions were introduced to me. And so I kept on going for these missions. And alhamdulillah, you know, I feel like through Mahidra and through learning about the deen, uh, and our responsibilities and what we're supposed to do as Muslims, of course, number one is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two is to help the creations of Allah, to do good to them, to, to, to you know, be as, uh, as helpful as we can be, to be well wishes for everyone. That is part of who we are supposed to be as believers. And when in learning this, I was like, okay, yeah, so this is my, my mission, right? Um, and of course, there's the hadith, famous one that talks about how, you know, our faith is complete only when we want for our brothers and sisters what we want for ourselves. And so, until today, I mean, it's a hadith from Rasulullah Wasallam, and it re really resonates with me because I can't imagine us being in a situation where, you know, now we become refugees. What if that happened to us? How would we want, you know, to be treated, right? So we need to treat others how we want to treat ourselves because if we were in that situation, inshallah, you know, there will be somebody out there who will be 
there for you, who can help you, who can actually lift you up. So, um, and I realize, you know, Allah has blessed us with so much here in Malaysia, alhamdulillah. You know, we have a roof over our heads, we have uh, plenty of food. And so we need to share the blessings that we have with those who are really in dire need. So, yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So that's how it all began in a nutshell. Mm. So you did mention that you went to New Zealand to meet the Syrian refugees, right? Yes. So perhaps is there any moments that maybe maybe make you feel like um and it overwhelms you and make you want to motivate you to continue doing this form of charity? Perhaps you can share with uh, us today. Oh, okay. So, um, of course, my first trip to Jordan was definitely one of the most uh, emotional ones because it was my first time. And uh, like you said, after that, I kept on going again and again because it was just something that I wanted to do so much and it, it had such a huge impact on me. And uh, I learned in class that, you know, it's one thing to give um, uh, finances to a charity but it's also something else to go out there yourself and meet the people and do some of the volunteer work, give in some of that you know, um, effort and break a bit of sweat and listen to their stories. Because then that's when you really, really understand and feel where they're coming from, you know, not just like a, like a bank transfer, you know? Um, so I would definitely suggest everybody, I know now it's very difficult. It's not easy to go out and, and do volunteer work at this moment of time because of the virus. But when we do get the chance, when it gets a bit safer, go out and do something that can, where you can actually meet people, yeah? So when I went there, I met this one family uh, of Syrian refugees. I met one of the, um, the head uh, of the refugees there. Um, his name was Ab 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 Abu Abdullah or Ab Abu Abdullah, if not too mistaken. And he mm -hmm. used to be very well mm -hmm. off in Syria. He was pretty much almost like he was like a, like a millionaire, a, a businessman. And of course, when the war happened, everything, he lost everything. Many of his family members were killed and he had no choice but to run uh, with his family over to Jordan. And uh, he moved from different camps to camp and he finally settled in one of the um, independent camps where Musa, Brother Musa was there. And uh, that's how he got to actually go to his camp and help uh, his family out there. And when he told me about his story, you know, it was, um, it's, it was very uh, quite heartbreaking because, you know, he's expressing himself and how one day you have everything and the next day is all taken away from you. And all you can do now is make dua. And at the same time, you know, he said he had a lot of uh, goals and dreams and hopes for his children, you know, to be doctors, mm -hmm. to be what they want to be. But at this point of time, at that point of time, there's, there was no, there was no, you know, not much hope. And so, you know, with all of that going on and with us Malaysian students, you know, us and some students over there, you know, he was so hospitable. He gave so much, even when he didn't have much to give, you know, he, he was so inviting. He asked us to come to his tent. He served us tea, you know, and he was just so open to us, you know. And for me, I was like, wow, subhanAllah. And one of the things he mentioned as well is that no matter what happens, you have to hold on to the Quran. You have to hold on to the Quran because that was is what's going to give you strength and always say alhamdulillah no matter what. And so he was showing his feelings of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even after everything that happened to him. And I was, subhanAllah, so moved by that. And I think to myself, we reflect, you know, we think about, okay, so when I'm in KL, what do I get angry about? Oh, I get angry when I'm stuck in the traffic. I get angry when somebody, when I don't get my food on time. You know, I don't, I yeah. get angry because of all these little petty things. And in fact, we, we, we have nothing to complain about when we think about what they go through. And so it's a reminder for us that, you know, we need to be grateful in life with everything that we have. Even if we go through hardship and it, even if we go through ease, we have to always be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's all a test for us, whether we are, you know, okay. And if we're going through struggle, it's all a test at the end of the day and how we uh, respond to it. So, yeah, that really affected me. And I think it affected the team, his story. You know, people were crying and, you know, of course, at the time is more emotional like, when you hear it from him. And so from there, you know, he also said he had no idea about Malaysia until he met the students, the Malaysian students who came to help him. He had no idea about Malaysia. And the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent aid and help from Malaysia to his family. Subhanallah. 
and he felt so he's like you know you guys you all like you're like halfway across the world but here you are doing something for us and to to them it's huge it's a huge sacrifice it's a huge thing and he you know and from there i, I was like okay we need to keep doing this because um the effect and the impact it's making on on one person's life is so big and malaysia is so famous there now like they love malaysia they love malaysians because we're such we're such giving people you know alhamdulillah so um, these kind of experiences really, you know, inspire me to to continue to do charity. And I hope that everyone who's watching right now, um, you'll get inspired as well to go out and do some uh, charity work because it is, again, it's different from just, you know, opening up your your um, account on online and just sending over some cash, you know. It's a huge difference from going there and meeting people and listening to their stories. When, when you see it in front of your eyes, then you, then you become more grateful and blessed with whatever you have and want to do more like how you're experiencing right now, right? Yeah. It gives yeah. more impact to you as the giver itself. Yes, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's that's a good point, actually. It, it is uh, another thing that I wanted to add on, that we feel like we are helping them. We are helping them with their dunya, but actually they are helping us with our akhirat. So, you know, it's a reminder to each other, you know, we are there for each other for, for, for akhirat. So, yeah, alhamdulillah. It's and alhamdulillah for the opportunities. True, true. That is very true. So, alhamdulillah, as we are now in the last 10 days of Ramadan, it is the most crucial time for us to do good things, to continue doing good deeds, which includes giving sadaqah. So I've encountered one poster which states that the importance of um, giving sadaqah is just one ringgit, which indicates that how valuable sadaqah is, right? So can you share with us today what sadaqah really means and does it only involve giving money to charities or to donations or to those in need? What is it more? What is sadaqah actually means to you? Okay, uh, so that's a really good question. Uh, Siddhika, charity, uh, it is uh, something that is uh, a part of uh, what we have to do as believers. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in the Quran many, many times about giving siddhika, giving charity, giving to those in need, giving to the orphans, giving to the, you know, uh, the poor. And uh, I've so far that I've learned, charity is not just about giving money. Okay, zakat is lain, yeah? Zakat too, another whole topic in itself, right? Uh, but charity in itself is is any good deed, you know. There's a hadith that I pulled out, but I just need to find it for you. Um, okay, here here we go. Can you just give me a second. Um, so anyway, charity. Uh, once I find the the hadith, I'll 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 read it out to you. Uh, but really, charity right, is sure. any any good deed, any good deed at all. Um, it can be, you know, uh, apart from giving money, it can be helping your brother or sister smile. A smile is charity. Um, giving somebody water is charity. Even if you have a, a single date, you give half a date of what you have. As long as your intention is sincere, ikhlas, and it's from the heart, that is a form of charity. Uh, saying a good word to someone is charity. If your friend is feeling down and really unmotivated, you know, so you, you call her up and you're like, hey, you know, are you okay or not, you know? So those kinds of kind words are also a charity. Mm -hmm. Your time is charity. Your skill is charity. Um, your uh, dedication to whatever it is that you want to give to is, is, a, is a form of charity as well. So there's so many ways in which we can give back. And subhanAllah, like Allah has made it so easy for us to actually give charity every single day. You know, giving presents, you know, giving presents, making somebody happy. Um, so, you know, now MCO is a, is a de very difficult time because uh, in terms of our fi finances and businesses and our e economy as well. So if you're unable to give um, from your finances, then you can give in other ways as well. Even doa is a form of charity. But I think we've lost connection with uh, our MC. So... I'm not too sure how we're going to do this, um, but I'm just going to keep on going. Uh, so giving water is a form of charity as well. And okay, wait, Dayang is coming in a few minutes. Okay, sure. 
so I'll just continue chit chatting. Yeah, I'm just going to continue sharing with you. Um, uh, and I found a hadith right here. Abu Huraira radiallahu an reported, uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Charity is due upon every joint of the people for every day upon which the sun rises." Justly reconciling between two people's charity, helping a man with his animal and lifting his luggage is charity. A kind word is charity. Every step that you take towards the masjid is charity. And moving, removing harmful things from the road is charity as well. So, wow, like so many options, right? Uh, okay. Assalamualaikum, Dayang. It's okay. <laughs> Oh my god, um, I'm very, very sorry everyone. The internet connection is really, really, really bad. I'm very, very sorry. It's okay. No problem at all. Alhamdulillah, I found the hadith tadi. And I, there's another hadith here that I'm just going to share while you get your, your okay. internet ready. Um, so, Jabir ibn Abdullah uh, radiallahu an reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Every good deed is charity. Verily, it is a good deed to meet your brother with a cheerful face. And pour and to pour what is left from your bucket into the vessel of your brother. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, um, these are just but a few among the many, many, many hadiths that mm -hmm. uh, talks about how we can give back and in the many different ways that we can. Uh, so, inshallah, I pray that inshallah we can um, in this last ten nights, nine nights of um, Ramadan, as we are seeking Laylatul Qadr we get to do an act of charity every single day, inshallah, as much as we can, as the deeds are multiplied immensely during this time. So, Dayang, are you here? Okay, I'm back. Okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Good, hi, there you are. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm so Okay, sorry. no problem. Okay, so I'm sure we have listened to the we have listened also based on the hadith that um, charity is giving money. It includes any little good deeds, even the tiny little ones and very simple ones, such as smiling to each other, is also considered a charity. Therefore, um, so when well, we know that the concept of charity is broad and the, um, and the idea of giving tzedakah is endless, it's limitless. Therefore, the recipient of the sedekah itself should also be bought too, right? You see, those who will receive the charity should be bought too. Mm -hmm. It's not limited to our own race, our own region, our own nationality, or our own family members. It should include all of everyone. What do you have to say about that? I think that is such an important point. Very, very important, especially at, during this time where there's so much division happening around the world. And uh, subhanAllah, like in Islam, nobody is superior than the other. Uh, was it in the last sermon? I can't remember, but we are all basically the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody is a superior to another. One race is not better than the other race and, and all of that. And uh, I feel that charity and siddiqah goes beyond race. It goes beyond religion. It goes beyond um any of that because it goes it goes straight to those who are in need regardless of who they are what's their background what's the skin color i had this experience where i went to um an african country with a good friend of mine she's a ceo of one of the ngos that i, I had volunteered with uh it's called pdi possible dreams um international and they focus on the uh, African community uh, living within South Africa. There is um, another country within South Africa. So we went there and uh, it's called Swaziland. Yeah. And, and in the land of Swaziland, most of the people there are Christians. They have a very small Muslim community, but the most of the people who are affected by poverty, like this is very, very bad poverty mm -hmm. to the point that they have to walk miles and miles and miles just for water. And um, majority of the people there are infected with AIDS. And so you have, you know, um, mm -hmm. the, the young, you know, people who are infected with AIDS, their children are infected with AIDS, and you've got the, the grandmothers and the grandfathers there who are okay. It's, it's, it's actually a, the, the, the younger generation who are infected with it. And so when I went there, you know, we were helping out uh, people who are non-Muslims, you know. Um, and I think it's so important because they see what Islam is about. 
that is what Islam is about. We are out to help people. It doesn't matter who they are. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, and, and I think we should do more of that here in Malaysia. You know, whether you're Chinese, Malay, Indian, it doesn't matter. If you're in need, you're in need. You know, if you're a refugee, if you're Syrian, if you're Rohingyan, it doesn't matter. We're all in need. If they're all, if they're in need, they're in need. Uh, and I feel that this mentality is something that's very constricting. You know, thinking that oh, we can only help our own, we can only help our own people, uh, our own religion. You know, yeah, it's good to help Islam, yes, but at the same time, don't ignore the rest. You know, don't ignore the rest. So I learned a big lesson there, and. Uh, coming back from Africa and they're like, you know, uh, we've never met Muslims before and you, you Muslims, you, you guys are really, you're not, you're, not, you're not bad, you're really nice people. So, you know, there's the da'wah element that comes in when we, when we help other than um, those who are Muslim. So, yeah, inshallah, I pray that, you know, this mentality will, inshallah, start to slowly go away when humanity comes back into the heart. True, because as long as we are we will definitely have the same need. We will still need water. We will still need food. We will still need shelter. Despite of regardless of our uh, race, age, um, religion, or anything, we are we are the same indeed. So it's important for us to give back to the people, to the society, regardless of regardless of anything. Just connect everyone with the sake of humanity itself. Just connect because you are a human, so I can feel you. I can feel the pain. I, I know how it feels like to be hungry, to be needy, because we are the same. So we should start giving charity not only to our own people, to our own race, our religion, our family members, but give it to everyone. Inshallah. So when, we, when we talk about giving to everyone, what is the hikmah of giving to everyone regardless of race and whatnot? You did mention that the hikmah is we can do da'wah, but apart from that, does it impact you in any ways or something? If we give to everyone? Um, I think it's important to also uh, mention that when we uh, are in the, when we give whatever it is that we want to give, um, charity, uh, you know, du'as, well-wishing, it's important that we also start from the home as well, that we need to have this, uh, this, this mm -hmm. compassion, and uh, the, you know, the love of giving uh, amongst our family members and also our relatives and to the communities around us and the people around us, whoever they are. And then um, moving out to outside of the country if we're able to. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, the hikmah behind giving a lot of people, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about how we give to charity, we, get, we, sh we need to give to people, you know, he, you know, like the poor, but specifically it's, it's the poor. If you're poor, you're poor, um, to the orphans, you know? Um, and the more you give, then the more Allah will give you, you know? And the more that we give, the more, uh, you know, good deeds will be multiplied for us in this life and the next. And people think that, you know what, I'm, uh, I'm giving too much, you know, like, um, I'm going to lose out, you know, I'm wasting my time, I'm losing out on money. No, 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 that's not true. Giving charity increases everything that you have. You actually gain more by giving. And if you don't see it in this life, you will definitely see it in the next life. But it will be in both dunya and akhirat as well. Uh, subhanallah, there is a verse in Surah Al-Baqarah which talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually multiplies um, the charity that we give and um, it is verse number 261 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed of grain which grows seven spikes and each spike is a hundred grains and Allah multiplies his reward for whom he wills and Allah is all encompassing and knowing. So spending your wealth in the way of Allah is spending it with the intention of pleasing him, uh, with the intention of uh, meeting his countenance. And I don't think it really, you know, we're, it limits as to who we want to give and uh, to where we want to give. But of course, it's important to make sure that who we are giving, you know, um, 
is is the right people in the sense that you know is getting straight to them you know uh, they are really really in need um uh and uh you know it's not something that goes against the deen of allah you know it's not like when we give money it's, it's actually it's going to help finance something that's actually going to go against islam no we don't do that right but we had um yeah yeah we're not going to do that right mm -hmm. so we need to do what you know when it comes to emergency um things you know then we can do that inshallah mm -hmm. true so we know that um uh, when uh, when Allah uh, when when we say that giving when we give we actually gain more which is a very strong point and we have to know that it's not only limited to money like when we give charity in terms of money we will get money in return maybe Allah will bless us with a happy family a feeling of content in the heart which is in numerous way in the way we are not expected uh, expecting it because we know that Allah will always give what we need. And not what we mm -hmm. want. Maybe after we give money, we have we hope that oh we will get more money in return. But no, Allah said what you need right now is a feeling of content, uh, a happy family. That's what you need more rather than money. Yes. And and we just have to believe in Allah, right? We have to really put trust in Him. That's why when you say we have when we give, it is to please Him, and inshallah we will get something uh, in return from Him. Yes, and that's such an so, important point you so mentioned, Dayang. Such a beautiful point that when we give, when we when we are obedient to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we gain that contentment in the heart. There's that fulfilling uh, feeling when uh, you're helping somebody out, and that is one of the drives of why you know a lot of people keep on doing charity work is because it is something that fulfills the heart, and it makes Allah happy. So if it makes Allah happy, it will make us happy as well. True. Which money can never ever buy, right? I didn't get you. You're you're breaking up. Sorry. What did you say? Sorry, Dayang. You're breaking up. Which, which money can never ever buy, it, right? Ah, so money Sorry. cannot buy contentment. The feeling of content, ah, okay, yes. Okay, yes. that's what you said. Okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay, sorry. no problem, alhamdulillah. Okay, so when we talk about the... Okay, when we talk about the broad receivers of sedekah that we can give, we can give to anyone and everyone. So how do we inspire youth, in particular students, to do charity? Because sometimes when we want to give money, we might give the reason that how can we donate when we, we uh, have money enough for ourselves only. And thus, the doing charity or giving sadaqah has an appropriate age to do oh. so. Uh, charity now or when I'm old later, too old to, to give charity. Is there any specific age to do charity? Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, you know, I think uh, as we were just discussing earlier, a couple of the hadiths, uh, when it comes to giving charity, there's so many ways, creative ways that we can actually give back. And so actually, we don't really have that much excuse to say, you know what, I can't. But actually you can. You know, if your mom is having a bad day, you know, why don't you help her out with some of the chores in the house? You know, that's a form of charity right uh for example and in terms of age i think there is no age when it comes to uh, giving charity of course when you're you're a baby obviously you can't do much but I, I think it's important for parents to expose their children to acts of charity when they're young so that the kids can see you know what oh there are other people out there who are not doing so well and um you know to go out and maybe you know feed the poor uh, get them to to see that you know what life is much bigger than this, and um, you know, and and just see how the world works. And so they are they will be more um, knowledgeable about these kinds of things. And so when they see their parents, you know, giving and helping, and they too will also adopt these um, characteristics. And inshallah, as they grow older, you know, maybe they'll be even more, you know, creative and like uh, more successful in terms of uh, finding ways in which they can actually make the world a better place. And I think um, that's the tarbiyah that needs to be done for children when they're young. And so us as teenagers, adults, 
you know, inshallah, when we when we are exposed to this, it'll be easier for us to actually go out and do charity. Um, but for, for example, people like me before, I was not so exposed, you know, a little bit here and there, but I was just so uh, engrossed in my own life and didn't care about other people. Um, <laughs> Staffa Azim. But alhamdulillah, Allah guided me. Um, it is important for us to, you know, in this day and age of social media and, um, and uh, it, you know, news and all that to see what's going on out in the world. Of course, don't believe everything you see, but at least understand, try to understand what's going on out there, you know, what is going on. Um, so, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, no age limit and no excuse, inshallah. No age limit and no excuse. Wow, that's a very <laughs> powerful, powerful quote to end the point there. It's very, I think I should uh, at least try to do something now. I should stop giving excuses and use my youth age. Yes, fully. exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay. Today, whether we like it or not, we are living in the world with uh, social media, whereby we do things and we share publicly online on our social media. So with regards to that, there are some people who, when they do charity, even they do it, they will post it on social media with the intention to inspire others. Mm -hmm. But some might see it as a form of riyah. So as a public figure and a well-known figure yourself, what do you have to say about that? Okay, uh, I've also had uh, issues with this as well, you know. And, you know, from time to time, I still do. Because, you know, we do worry that when we start you know, posting pictures and videos, is it a form of riyah? Am I being, you know, arrogant? Am I just showing off to people that this is that, this is that, this and that, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But, you know, after speaking to a few um, ustazas and ustads and also some, uh, some of my friends who are working with NGOs, um, you know, I've come to learn that if you are posting it with the intention to um, inform people so that they too can do some good, right? Um, not with the intention to show off. It has very important, niyat is so important, um, so that they can perhaps, you know, donate and do all these kinds of things. It's okay. It's okay. We also have to be very careful with the kind of pictures that we post, the words that we use. Um, you know, it's not just a selfie with the kids, you know, and then that's it, right? There has to be a follow-up af after that as well. So. As, um, as someone who has been doing this for a few years, yeah, definitely I'm worried. I'm still worried about it today. And I always question my sincerity and I always ask Allah to, to clean my heart and to keep my intentions sincere so that when I do things, it's sincerely for Him. Inshallah, I'll be rewarded for it. Um, and I recently learned that it's also very important when we do charity, um, that we have a balance between what we show and what we don't show. So... You know, okay. what we see on social media is just what we decide and what we choose for you to see. You know, it doesn't mean that that is our whole life. So um, for, you know, and this, this is a reminder to myself and a reminder to uh, everyone who's watching right now, when you are doing charity, yes, it's okay to post, you know, we need to um, actually get it, you know, wide. We want people to know what's going on. We want people to, to donate. Right. At the same time, it's okay to post the videos because we want people to see transparency, to know that okay, your money is here right now. This is the food. This is what's happening. We cannot show off, right? It is a way of showing people that your money is being used right now and it is getting to the people right now and they are eating right now. You know, so it's evidence. It's evidence of what's going on. Alhamdulillah. Uh, but again, um, you know, that's what we show. It's important for us to also do charity that is not shown and charity that is actually private that's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So have a good balance in that. In fact, have more um, hidden charity as compared to the outer charity, inshallah. So again, you don't have to show everything on social media. It can just be the important things that you want to show your, your audience. Like, okay, um, this is what uh, what we did with this campaign, uh, okay? And then this is the next campaign. Here's where you can donate. La la la. Okay, da. You know, you don't have to go and say, "Oh, I did this," and then, you know, like really go into it. No, 
Um, and, and also it's okay to share if there's a lesson to it and if there's a reflection to it as well that can bring people closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inspire them to do good. Uh, there is a hadith, uh, I, I can't, I didn't, I didn't copy it down just now, but when you lead and when you guide somebody to do something that is good, inshallah, you'll also get the reward of it as well. So leading people to khair is definitely um, something that's very, very uh, good to do, inshallah. So yeah, it's so important for all of us individually to always question ourselves, you know, am I sincere or not? Is this post, in, is it sincere or not? And am I doing enough individual um, uh, charity? Am I, or even good deeds like in Ramadan, you know? Am I doing more uh, private deeds as compared to the outer ones that I'm doing that people can see me do, you know? So inshallah, if we have that, then hopefully inshallah, you know, we, we will stay away from Riyadh. Um, but may Allah protect us from, from, from showing off inshallah, I mean. True. <laughs> it's a very, very powerful point because Ria is a matter of heart. You know, you cannot see it. You know, same goes to sincerity. So it's always important for you to renew your attention and, like what you said, make more of the hidden uh, charity compared to those you show online. Uh, make it more the private ones between you and God, so that you can reflect on yourself more. I believe, right? Yes, inshallah, inshallah. Yeah. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, we have uh, uh, asked all the questions for the discussion. We have a very interesting session with Miss Nina, which is an, such an inspirational figure. So mm -hmm. I can see from the private chat that we have lots of questions, interesting questions from the uh, audience. So shall we get right to it, Miss Nina? Okay, okay, Bismillah, boleh, inshallah. Hi, so, alaikum. May I ask? So I will read to you the question and you will answer it. Is it okay? Okay. Okay. Hi, Samaiko. May I ask, what can at least we do to help our brothers and sisters in Islam? What can we do to help our brothers and sisters in Islam? Um, there's so many things that we can do. Uh, you know, if you, uh, I would definitely uh, advise or would like to inspire you to find your passion. You know, um, are you more inspired to help maybe the Mu'alaf, you know, or um, you want to go and help out the refugees who are living here in Malaysia, you know, uh, the Muslim refugees here, or do you want to go help out with the um, orphanages or um, So uh, it's easier to identify once you know what, who you're more passionate about. Of course, we need to help everyone, but... Before we help everybody, let's 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 start with somewhere first, you know. So start with one group dulu, and then from there you can actually expand um, the people that you are aiding. Uh, and I would definitely advise for you if you're um, uh, quite new to doing charity work, is to go out and actually volunteer with uh, NGOs who are already doing a lot of work out there, um, with any NGOs, yeah. Um, so you can learn from them. And you can see how they do their work. And in, inshallah, you will gain a lot of uh, okay. beneficial knowledge on how to do charity and how to deal with people as well um, in terms of, uh, you know, um, humanitarian work. So I hope that helps answer the question. Yeah, it means that let's do baby steps first. We start from small, then we can grow to become bigger, bigger and bigger, right? Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, the next question. Why is it so hard for someone to give back? What holds them from giving back? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> okay, uh, I think from what I've learned so far is that when the heart is constricted, when the heart is tight, you know, when the heart becomes stingy and miserly, right, uh, it's difficult for someone to give. Uh, when you only think about me, myself, and I, and uh, when, when there's a lot of maybe negativity in the heart, when the heart is, um, you know, consumed with a lot of things like, um, you know, hatred, jealousy, um, again, it's me, 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 what about me, what about me, what do I get, what do I get, right? Um, there's no uh, well-wishing, there's no like, you know what, I feel for you, uh, I have compassion for you, uh, I feel sad for you, 
can be. And uh, sometimes it's it's uh, it's it's difficult when when the heart is constricted. And um, my you know from my experience, I think it's important for us to try to expand the heart. And how do we expand the heart? We expand the heart by first asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to help expand our hearts and to purify our hearts from these feelings of stinginess, of you know not helping people and of course it's, it's quite difficult to get to that stage you have to be aware about yourself like you have to be real with yourself like do i need to improve myself you know like am i a good person <laughs> you know like this person whoever has to come to a point where am i actually a good person you know do i how what do i need to do to improve myself uh and that takes a lot of courage and that takes a lot of honesty to be able to dig in deep and see what we need to do to purify and uh, and make our, our hearts more pure so that we can start helping people because if we're unable to love ourselves how are we going to actually spread love to other people so um we need to work on the self i know it's about me 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 me, me but we got to break that ego and 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 uh from me 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 it's about us so at the end of the day, it's about the heart. We have to make a lot of du'a so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will um, soften their hearts so that they can start, you know, loving and giving other people, inshallah. Inshallah. Allah knows best. Okay. So on to um, the next question. Inshallah. Allah knows best. True. On to the next question. Uh, can someone postpone to pay their debt if they intend to pay during the last 10 days of Ramadan? Oh, um, can someone postpone to pay their debt if they intend to pay it during the last... Okay. Um, I think this is... Is this a fake question? I'm not too sure. I don't really know how to answer this, but in terms of debt, I know that as soon as you can pay your debt, pay it. <laughs> if you owe people money, just pay it back as soon as you can, inshallah uh in, in in you know at any given time but if you're specifically want to ask about this i think it's better you go to uh nustad or ustaza or sheikh to to ask the specific question in terms of uh, postponing the debt um, but from what i know it's important to pay the debt asap mm -hmm. if you have the money pay it straight away inshallah all right thank you mr so the last and final question we have is salam showing off and ikhlas do not come hand in hand do you have advice on how to give and not wanting to be seen giving how to in out inculcate inculcate ikhlas. ikhlas okay so we, we had a good discussion about this study kan uh and uh you know um, if you feel like you are not being uh you know sincere when it comes to giving charity then don't show it to people it's as simple as that don't post it on social media you know uh unless you want people to donate to your campaign right then you just post the the, the poster of the campaign that you want them to donate to um and uh you know if you don't if you don't want let's say for example you know you 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 raise some money and you you um went to rumah orang tua and then you you know say, okay, this money is for buku puasa for this night um you know it's really up to you you don't have to show it because you've already you've already um uh apa ni, got the donations but of course if it's to to show that but the betul you did the buku puasa then it's okay to show another way of doing it is to send it to your donors mm -hmm. Uh, individually, if it's not such a big thing, right? Oh. If it's not such a huge thing. If it's a small, you know, project, yeah. you can do that. If you don't have that many donors, you can actually send over uh, private pictures mm -hmm. to their WhatsApp or to their phones. Um, but if it's a big organization, um, you know, most of the time, big organizations will actually have a media team and they will show what they did, you know? Um, and usually we are always a part of it. So um, that part we can't really control, you know? Uh, it, it's just to show the transparency. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I think like like Dayang was saying, it's important again to have a uh, good intention to to purify our intentions every day, mm -hmm. and um, just to make sure that we measure ourselves and always be aware of of um, why we are posting and why we're doing it, and have to and have more private um, acts of charity, inshallah. Mm -hmm. 
Inshallah. All right. I think that's it for our questions and answer session. And we that's all the time that we have for today's show. But before this show, I would like Ms. Nina, I will humbly ask Rifania to share her final words with our audience. Today. Okay. Uh, so I just want to say Jazakumullah Khairan, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, Jazakumullah Hedayang, and to the whole um, team for inviting me here today. I hope that, inshallah, after this, uh, everybody is going to do a little bit of charity, okay? Last 10 nights of Ramadan, a perfect time to give back and to make somebody happy and to make this world a better place, inshallah. Uh, you can check out my social media, um, Miss Official Miss Nina on IG to see what campaign I'm supporting this, uh, this time in Ramadan. Um, there's a lot going on. Um, I have a campaign with Chinta Syria Malaysia. Uh, my husband no, also has a campaign with Kambara Insani. Um, there's also, um, uh, I have a platform called Kamikita Marketplace. You can check out online as well, where we give back to our uh, NGO partners um, and many more. So uh, don't forget to see what's going on. Do your part, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, reward you and multiply all of your good deeds this month. And may we attain his forgiveness and Laylatul Qadar, inshallah. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, sis. So much with Nina on behalf of the IIM TV team. We are uh, we are honored to have you with our show today. Thank you so 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 much. And with that being said, let's be inspired by today's chat. There is no specific item to do charity, there is no specific recipients, there is no specific give back, no excuse, no age limit. So let's all just give. Before I end today's show, I would like to share with all of us a very uh, uh, an authentic hadith of the Prophet, which is take the benefit of five before the five. The first one is youth before old age. Second, health before sickness. Third, wealth before Poverty, uh -oh, it's fourth, free time in life before death. So let us all do and make do of the time that we have right now to give back to the society, especially in these 10 days of Ramadan. With that being said, thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you, Ms. Dina. We'll see you guys on the Bye. Thank you.